Welcome to the Global Gaming Business Podcast, the industry's first and longest running podcast now in our 17th year. I'm Roger Gross, the publisher of GGB, and this week we sit down with Brandon Dardo, the Southeast Regional President and CEO for MGM Resorts, on how Beauvage Casino in Biloxi has just passed the millionth passenger mark for its charter airline service. This week's podcast is sponsored by IGT with its newest MLP theme, Prosperity Link. It's a hit and performing it over three times versus house, according to Ireland's June report. Learn more at IGT.com slash prosperity. Welcome to the Global Gaming Business po- Podcast. My guest today is Brandon Dardo, the uh, uh, president and general manager of the Beau Rivage in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi. Brandon, great to, to catch up with you here. Uh, you know, one of my favorite properties down there for sure. And, uh, and you know, the, you had some great leaders there. You know, I, I'm good friends with Travis, Travis, uh, who, who's now running the Borgata here in Atlantic City. So I'm, I'm glad we could get acquainted here. Yeah, yeah, I've been uh, part of the Bo family since 2001. So you are correct. We've had a lot of great leaders uh, come through, and, and you know, Travis, I get to call a great personal friend as well. Sure. Right. Uh, and so, yeah, really happy for him to be up at Brigada. And, uh, I'm actually coming up there in about 30 days to see. All right, great, great. Yeah, yeah he's, he's doing very well. I spent a weekend in New York with him uh, last week, going to the Yankee game, and had a great time. <laughs> I, I got I got some pictures. I didn't know he was great. Okay, right. I definitely got some pictures. Uh, he's you know big Boston fan, so. Right. Uh, so, so becoming president of the Bow must be almost a dream to come true for you, since you've been with the property for for more than twenty years. Give us a path you 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 took to reach that level. Yeah, so I, I grew up originally in Louisiana, and after finishing college, uh, you know, wanted to get in in the business. So, um, had uh, actually had only been to Biloxi once or twice, but had visited Las Vegas, and uh, so loaded up a car and moved out there, and uh, really broke in the business and. Uh, and, you know, just happened to land at MGM Grand as my first job. And then uh, after a couple of years of being in Las Vegas and, you know, maxing out every credit card I had, I said, uh, time time to go south and uh, right. get a little closer to home. And uh, just happened to be, uh, you know, Beau Rivage, um was was part of that organization, part of MGM. And so was right. able to transfer and really began what, what, you know, I went from probably having a job to more of a career at, at right. the and I uh, really saw that, hey, there was a future in this for me. And I, I was just, you know, just amazed by the industry and amazed by the property and the people. So I uh, love the Gulf Coast. And so really, uh, you know, a lot of hard work, obviously, through the years. Uh, yeah. A lot of great leadership, learned a lot um, uh, throughout the year. Yeah, it's been it's been a fun journey and, and definitely a dream come true to, to lead this property uh, where, you know, again, I kind of cut my teeth and right. moved up into management. So I understand you, you had had positions in in many of the uh, of the departments. So and does that, do you think that makes you a, a better a better leader in terms of uh, knowing what what these people are doing? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, what I think was what what unique about our our business is you know we have many leaders that you know it, it doesn't take a college degree to be successful in in this business and in so many other ones, right? Sure. Other industries you can't even get a shot w- without it. And look, right. I happen to have a degree, uh, a background in marketing, but look, I started as a, as an on call call center rep in Las Vegas and, and got really into the slot department. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Scott Krieger, who's obviously done very well yeah. for himself, actually, uh, yeah. you know, was entry level manager at the time and said, Hey, you know, future of the business of slots and you should check it out. And so yeah. I, I took, uh, took that, that word of advice and, and got involved in it. And ultimately, came back to Beau Rivage and worked in slot operations and, you know, had a marketing background and, you know, always enjoyed speaking to customers. And, and so, you know, kind of got involved in the casino marketing and the hosting world uh, and then just continued to learn. It seems like every couple of years I was given, you know, a, a, a stretch role or an opportunity to, to learn something new. And, you know, I was always the first one to raise my hand and, and say, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to take some new endeavor on. So Sure. Absolutely. So uh, we just celebrated the 30th anniversary of, of gaming in Mississippi. Uh, even though Bo wasn't there from the very start, the land it sits on was it was uh, one of the first casino properties, uh, the Biloxi Bell. But the Bo has played a huge role in transitioning the, the industry from small riverboats to to uh, glamorous, you know, high scale uh, gaming complexes. So how is the Bo trying to preserve its space at the top of the market in Biloxi? Yeah, so you know, and, and you kind of mentioned it, right? When when the Gulf Coast first, uh, in, in Louisiana for that for that fact, uh, right. or that matter as well, kind of you know, it was a regional, local type. You know, you had people come from Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, maybe a little bit from the Panhandle, of Florida, uh, onto the Gulf Coast. And again, you know, up in the the northern market, you know, you had Tunica, which was actually a much larger market back right. in, in those late nineties sure. uh, than the Gulf Coast. And so, I, I think we're we're a Beau Rivage, uh, in in 
maybe um, specifically kind of came in and tried try to change that into more of a destination market, right? Steve Wynn built the property. It's uh, 1,790 hotel rooms, which, you know, if it was built today, probably wouldn't be built as large. Yeah. Uh, but but it did uh, kind of give us the tools to create um, the national market that that the Gulf Coast has become, and specifically around Beau Rivage. I mean, 70% of our business uh, comes from more than 300 miles away, which, you know, what we sure. say that a lot of people are surprised by that. Yeah. Uh, but, but the Gulf Coast really has become a destination type market. You know, people are making decisions to go, you know, to Atlantis or to the Bahamas, right. uh, to Las Vegas. And, you know, in, in some of those choices, they're, they're choosing to come to Biloxi. So it really has introduced the Gulf Coast to, uh, you know, to more of a national base of customers. Sure. And and the, the the amenities you offer your customers are, are pretty pretty uh, impressive as well. You know, I mean, you've got a golf course, uh, you've got a great spa, you've got the uh, the Shuckers uh, Stadium right across the street. I mean, uh, there's a lot for people to do, even if they don't gamble. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Obviously, you know, most of our focus is gaming. Uh, you know, we're but we are a full service resort, right? Many of our customers right. game, but obviously you want to enjoy all the others. And you know, people stay three or four nights is, is pretty common. Uh, we are lucky enough to have Fallen Oak, which is, uh, I'm a golfer myself. So, uh, you know, as a world-class golf course, um, uh, sister kind of course of Shadow Creek and, and really, you know, in similar type of level of a course is that, and again, people are surprised when they come to uh, to South Mississippi to have access to, to that level of golf course, as well as some of the other, uh, you know, it's, it's really great golf course. Right. Um, but yeah, absolutely, you know, spas, the pools, I mean, just the view. Uh, look, love Las Vegas, uh, visit often. Um, but when you look out and you look at it, that Mississippi Sound and you see dolphins right, yeah. and trip boats going by, sailboats, it, it's a different type, uh, different type feel. And uh, again, it it's, doesn't make it better or worse; it just makes it unique. Yeah, I mean, I've I've stayed in a couple of suites at the top of the bow, and uh, beautiful view out there with all the boats going by, and and then the the islands, uh, the barrier islands further out. It's just a, a great yeah. great uh, place to to stay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it absolutely is. So, so more than a decade ago, the Bo began a charter plane program, and you're close to bringing in the millionth customer over that period. Uh, explain how that program got started and why it's been working so well for so long. Yeah, so uh, I guess I, I'll go really to the really early days when, when you know, you remember in, in 99 or 2000, when right. the first opened. Again, you know, the, the property is a large um, hotel, 1,790 rooms. Um, and, you know, there's just not enough people in the market or even in the, the drive in feeder markets to, to fill the entire facility, uh, and, as well as all the other competitors in the market. Sure. So um, at, at those times, uh, a couple of properties, uh, it was Grand Casino and Borovage at the time, uh, partnered with um, a, a provider called Airtran uh, that, were, that was flying, you know, it was commercial air service, but it was really flying in uh, you know, subsidized by the casinos, sure, right. by those two. And and ultimately that, you know, Southwest bought AirTran and, and that uh, ultimately went away. And so uh, a gentleman by the name of Ryan Ross, who's actually up at Borgata uh, with Travis now as the Senior Vice President of Marketing, right. uh, actually brought the program uh, into the company. Um, he had done it in his previous, the previous work and really introduced that, um, you know, I would say in the, you know, probably in the 2008-ish range. Uh, really introduced, um, you know, our company to that individual sure. uh, program. And so, yeah, so it's kind of grown in time and obviously evolved and we've learned a lot and gotten better and better, better over the years. But, you know, today it represents, I mean, we're, you know, we are 500 or so of the hotel rooms in our facilities filled by that charter program every day, it flies to 85 cities, customers stay three or four nights. And, and again, it really just introduces the Gulf Coast to people from Boston and New York and sure. Detroit. And, and really, if, 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 it's a, if there's a city in the central and eastern time zone mm -hmm. that is large enough to, uh, has an airport large enough to land a 737, uh, we fly there. And, and, you know, again, we've evolved it over the years, but very big part of what, sure. what we do here at the boat. Are there, are there cities that, that, uh, that bring more more players there to so Atlanta. I know Atlanta's always been a big market for the coast. Yeah, so it's interesting. Atlanta is one of the few places we actually don't fly uh, because really? there is direct <laughs> service into it, and you right. know, obviously it's the busiest airport in the world. So you know, trying to trying to get time slots in Atlanta can be very yeah, difficult. Uh, it's still a great market for us. Uh, we do have six direct flights in and out of that market every day uh, from a commercial standpoint. So so mm -hmm. we're, we're covered there. But yeah, our, our our most successful cities are in South Florida, St. Pete, Tampa area, very successful. But you know, we have properties in in 
you know, Detroit, Michigan. We have MGM Detroit there. So right. it might surprise you, but Detroit is one of our top markets uh, as well. So we fly there often and a lot. Same thing with, with DC and uh, and even the Northeast now with Borgata being part of the of the MGM family. Uh, you know, we're right. doing a lot of Philly flights. And um, uh, so South, a lot of South Florida's, but Texas is a great market for us as well. Yeah. So do you, do you use exclusively the, the MGM Rewards uh, database there or do you, do you go beyond that? It, the majority of it is an MGM Rewards database. I mean, it's a great part about being a part of a large organization or a large company with, you know, a lot of premium customers in the database. Right. Uh, but we do have, uh, you know, we advertise on, on, on social media. We do have a small portion, you know, less than 10 percent of our population paying full uh, full package rates that, you know, quite frankly, don't even have a, a, a card. So it, it is uh, it, it is more than just MGM Rewards. But right. obviously, we rely on that as, a, as our backbone for the program. Okay. Right. Uh, you most recently, before the uh, bow, you were a GM at the Gold Strike in Tunica. Uh, you know, very, very strange market. I mean, it, as you said, early, early days, it was a huge market, and it's kind of dwindled down now. And MGM just recently sold the Gold Strike to uh, to the Oklahoma Cherokees. Uh, uh, what led to that decision, and and and, uh, and how how did that, how is it going to be pulled off when it's finally finally closes? Yeah, so I so I spent uh, like I said, I started at Bow in '01. Um, and you know, recently got in this role earlier this year. Uh, but I had spent uh, a four-year stint in Tunica as a VP of marketing, and then um, you know, right before COVID hit, right. as the general manager um, up there, and you know, kind of through 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 that time, the, those COVID times, which obviously were very difficult. But Gold Strike has, has been a very interesting part, I think, of our company and, and part of my you know personal journey as well. I, I've learned uh, a lot there. Um, and it is a market, like you, like you said, right? It was a billion five. Now it's down to you know a six hundred million dollar market, right. uh, or there thereabouts. Um, and yet our property uh, went from, you know, one of the the, the lower ranking properties in Tunica when we acquired it back in 05 right. to really now the market leader. And so I think it it symbolizes what our company can do. Um, you know, we have the right capital reinvestment. Uh, or the ca right capital investments will reinvest in customers in the right way. And to see that property, even though that market is down, you know, by some huge percentage, I'll let you do the math right. on that. Uh, right. You know, our property's financial performance has grown exponentially. Right. Uh, and, and ultimately, look, the company made the decision to, to sell that asset and, and focus on other things. Uh, you know, those are obviously publicly traded companies make decisions like that. But, but still, it is a very... Um, I think it, it was a very successful endeavor and, uh, and, you know, a great group of people up there and they'll continue to be the market leader and they'll continue to grow. And, uh, sure. And, sure. And, you know, I, I know a lot of the, the leaders out there in Tunica and, and they, they always tell me how great the, the employees are up there. How did, how did you break the news to the employees and, 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 uh, you know, let them know that, that they were going to be okay, basically. Yeah. Look, it, you know, it's a small, it is a smaller property. And so, right. you know, being able to do that face to face and, and, and explain the, the reasons why, and and really the you know the 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 buyer of this particular it, it will be their flagship property. Right. Um, you know, Gold Strike is not the flagship property of, of MGM Resorts. When you right. have the likes of Bellagio, Sonorias, even within the state, when you have you know Beau Rivage. Um, and so the property will now, and those leaders will get the get the opportunity to really be the flagship property of an organization. Um, and so you know the 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 leaders uh, of that group have been on property a lot and have talked one-to-one uh, -one with the leaders and, and honestly, even the mid-level management about what their plans are right. for the property. And so it's really been a positive experience so far. We expect it to close in, in Q1 of next year. Mm -hmm. uh, but but again, all in all, I think it's going to be a win-win for for everybody and particularly for the employees that, that's there. I, you know, look, that, that property, um, it's been amazing, the, the changes that the property's undergone. Not just, you know, the capital investment that's gone in, but also just um, I think the focus of the employee and the service culture that that property has really, uh, really focused on over the years. Um, you know, we, we joke about it sometimes. We've had, a, you know, a, a large group of leaders right. that have come through that property. Uh, Nick Riddestrom, who is now the leader at Cosmopolitan right. uh, in Las, of Las Vegas, um, went, you know, made, went, went through Tunica. Um, Melanie Johnson, who's our president up at National right. Harbor. Uh, David Sai, who's our president at MGM um, Detroit, mm -hmm. and obviously myself, and, and even Travis, right? Travis oversaw right. that property uh, when I was a GM up there. So we, you know, we we worked on it together. So it really has been a staple of a lot of uh, a lot of growth of our leaders throughout the, throughout the company. Great, great. The cat's out of the bag. 
IGT's newest MLP theme, Prosperity Link, is a hit and performing at over triple versus House, according to Eiler's June report. Both partner themes feature the player favorite lock and respin bonus and the exciting free games bonus with either scatter or multiplier wilds. Prosperity Link will drive players to your floor with its popular game mechanics. Grab this exciting game while it's hot. Learn more at IGT.com slash prosperity. Great, great. Let's talk about uh, sports betting in Mississippi. You know, it's been active for something like around three years now, but it's still limited to retail locations. Are, are you confident that that mobile will be permitted in, within the next year or so? Yeah, you know, I don't know the timing of it, but obviously, you know, we believe it's inevitable. Uh, Mississippi was one of the first states after Passport's approval. Right. You know, New Jersey kind of led the way, right. and then Mississippi just, you know, just days later. Um, past retail sports betting and, and you know we saw a huge impact in both the northern and the southern markets both in the tuna right. and gulf coast market and you know now louisiana has it tennessee has the mobile uh the you know the, the mobile legislative pass so you know time will tell when yeah. but i do think it's just a matter of time uh, you know, when it comes it look it's a smaller piece of our business currently mm -hmm. we do think it will grow over time but, um, you know, I, I think the timing on it, we'll just have to wait and see. Sure, sure. So, uh, you know, Mississippi is a heart of the SEC. How do you plan to, to uh, capitalize on SEC, SEC football and then the NFL during the fall? Obviously, they were just about through the doldrums and ready to go. Yeah. So, you know, we the, look, the first year of sports betting, I think we didn't know what to expect. Now we've kind of got a good understanding sure. of what it is. Uh, Obviously, we bring a lot of customers over that have visited probably for years over to, to New Orleans and even to some of the LSU games. Um, but, we, you know, now it's more about the camaraderie. It's about, I mean, as, much, as great as mobile is, people still uh, want to be in a room. And there's nothing like being in a sports book, as you know, I'm sure. Right. Being in a sports book the day of the game, um, you know, it's very interesting to, to watch like an LSU-Alabama game when you got half the, you know, half the room is pulling for this team and half the room and just the banter that goes back and forth. And, and it's all in, in, in fun, um, you know, fun spirits. But at, at the end of the day, you know, we really capitalize on having people within our building um, sure, right. for, for that. And, uh, and again, we have, you know, people come from all over the country. So for, for somebody from, you know, Michigan to come down and see the passion that, that LSU football, and I, I just use Michigan. It could be any, obviously right. they have, very passionate fans there as well. Right. Actually, on my bucket list to go uh, to, the, to the big house and watch Ohio State Michigan game. But uh, but you know just just the the energy that's in the building when SEC football is in it's, it's really a neat thing to be a part of. Great, great. So you tra transitioned from M Life to MGM Rewards uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, it, it took a while to really ramp up, but uh, how is that being accepted now by the customers? Yeah, you know, so M Life and I, and lucky I've been a part of that, kind of having a marketing background, right. uh, part of the, the the loyalty story of the company over the years. And, and you know, we, we think this is a pretty big leap forward uh, with MGM Rewards. Um, we unlock a lot of the, the technology um, later. Actually, in October, we're gonna we're gonna launch some some added technology can give us a lot more resources. Right. Um, but you know, like at the end of the day, regional customers do enjoy and participate in loyalty programs. They find the value in them, and MGM Rewards is is the most valuable, rewarding program uh, that that exists in, in inside the industry. So, you know, MGM Rewards really introduced uh, non gaming customers, which obviously a little more Las Vegas centric uh, when it comes to non gaming focus on you know food and beverage and in uh, hotel and entertainment and all that other non gaming spend uh, that that we're now reinvesting in and customers are getting value in that. So we'll continue to evolve it. Uh, you know, casino loyalty programs have been around for a long time. Um, and so, you know, we've learned through the years and we'll continue to grow it. The, the, the biggest thing for us, I think, is just using and allowing customers to use their rewards across all of our different companies, right? Even from Brigada to where you sit, right? Brigada down to Biloxi, we're seeing right. a larger and larger number of, of people that are traveling between one or the other. We're actually bringing a group up to Brigada from, from Borovage to Brigada on our charter program. We actually kind of run it both ways now, uh, not only to Biloxi, but also up to Atlantic City. And uh, we're going up here in about 30 days to for a visit there and introducing a lot of customers to a new brands. So that's really the, the, I think the evolution and the value that we'll have going forward. 
Sure, sure, absolutely. So, you know, uh, the coast is a, a pretty competitive market. You've got some great, uh, great uh, casinos there and companies that run them. Uh, but it's, it's also uh, some way you get together when it comes to the large uh, ghost wide events like Cruise on the Coast and things of that nature. Uh, um, how, how do you work with other other casinos in that, in that respect and, and also the, the uh, tourism division? Yeah, I think, you know, over the years, um, you know, the coast has probably evolved a little bit more into, hey, you know, all uh, boats rise with the rising water, however that saying right. goes. Um, and I think you definitely have much more of that, um, uh, you know, the positioning as a market versus, you know, battling over uh, individual customers that live in the same market. That's one of the things that's great about having seeing the market grow to more of a, uh, maybe not, I won't call it pure national. In Beau Rivage, we are a national uh, customer base. The other properties are a little bit more regionally focused, right. uh, but you do see growth to, to a city like Atlanta, uh, mm -hmm. where, you know, Atlanta has plenty of people. We don't have to fight over the, the right. that's coming from Atlanta. So I think as you've seen the market expand and grow, you've seen much more uh, cohesiveness with the market really rallying around certain events. You know, you mentioned cruising the coast, you know, that was started, you know, 20 or so years ago. And now it's, you know, it's one of the largest um, organization groups and, and it's a great time of year, right? In October sure. to come down, right. it just takes over the entire area. And and it is great for the whole coast. It's look, it, it's great for, you know, Borovage. Um, it's, you know, uh, it, it's not one of our stronger weekends by any means because we are very gaming focused, but it is great for the market. And we do have, people that want to come in and be part of that, um, you know, really part of that offering. So it, right. I, I see a lot more co-working, I guess, when it comes to, to events like that than maybe okay. even 10 or 15 years ago. So there's a couple of pro proposals for new casinos in Biloxi. Do you think the market can handle two new large casinos? I, you know, it, it's, it, everybody's got an opinion on it. And, right, I'm sure. Uh, you, you know, look, if another barrage was to be built, Right. Uh, which, you know, I, I don't know that that's necessarily on the table. I mean, this would be, you know, multi-billion of dollars. Right. Uh, you know, you need something to grow the market and and just adding more and more casinos. You know, you've seen it happen in Atlantic City where right. you, you get to a point where you have too many. It's right. not necessarily a great thing. So I think getting that right balance and just ensuring that whatever new property does come about, bring something unique and new to the market, whether it you know, be a database or whether it be just a, a physical offering that, that others don't have, I think you can definitely see positives of, of adding. But, but again, I think it would all depend on you know, who the operators are, what the background is, and, and really what the, what's the physical plan going to look like. Uh, is it going to attract a new customer? To right, right. And expand the pie rather than cutting into small. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Right, right. Well, Brandon, thanks for joining us. It's, uh, it's great to catch up with you. And uh, I got to get down there. It's been three or four years since I've been down there and uh, one of my favorite places in the country. So thanks for well, joining. Well, great. Yeah, we're, we're currently undergoing a, a complete room remodel. So uh, That's right. yeah. it'll be great. Uh, it'll be great to have you down and, and make sure to, uh, to look something. Maybe we'll go, go fishing. Great. I'll talk to Mary and we'll get that set up. All right. Very good. All right. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Talk to you. Hope you enjoyed this week's podcast sponsored by IGT and its newest MLP theme, Prosperity Link. It's a hit and performing at over three times versus house according to the Eilers June report. Discover more at IGT.com slash prosperity. To learn more about casino marketing and unique programs that bring in casino players, visit ggbmagazine.com. Subscribe to GGB News to get all the news of the gaming industry delivered to your desktop every Monday morning. Sign up at ggbnews.com and use the coupon code GGB180 for a free subscription. Don't miss a single episode of the podcast. Subscribe on Amazon, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify today. So we'll see you next time on the GGB Podcast.